About 7,000 trained security professionals guard our nuclear power plant sites in the United States. When they first take their jobs, these officers undergo more than 270 hours of training. After that, they receive about 90 hours of training each year. They also engage in about 30 hours of anti-terrorist training and regularly train in mock exercises to defend the plant. The industry works closely with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to enhance these programs. You're inside one of the nation's largest nuclear facilities. These are some of the security officers responsible for protecting it against a terrorist attack, an attack that could kill or injure tens of thousands, including people here in our area. But instead of being alert and prepared for anything, the officers are asleep. Unaware, fellow guard is videotaping these disturbing images shot at different times of the day. The officers work here at Peach Bottom Nuclear Plant located just outside of Philadelphia. And the men and women who work here are supposed to be at the ready to protect and defend the facility against a terrorist attack. Terrorists can do to a reactor precisely what an accident can and can unfortunately do it better. Terrorists can wait for the most unfavorable meteorological conditions so that the wind is blowing towards the populated area. Uh, terrorists can make sure that both the primary and the secondary systems are disabled. So these are, in some sense, um, uh, pre-emplaced nuclear weapons for our, our adversary. They can't blow up like a nuclear bomb, but they can release very much more radioactivity than a classical fission nuclear weapon. And all it takes is a terrorist using conventional explosives, handguns, breaking in on the ground, or flying a plane into some of the soft targets at the reactor. And uh, you can have a, uh, an effect that is uh, close to that of a nuclear weapon in terms of casualties. Experts tell CBS2 News radiation from a nuclear fire that starts at Peach Bottom would spread and could kill thousands of people as far away as D.C. and New York City, and it could leave 188 square miles uninhabitable. CBS2 News brought the tape to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the federal agency which oversees the nation's nuclear power plants. Uh, we're often told that uh, containment structures are designed to withstand the attack of a, uh, the crash of a jumbo jet, and therefore not to worry. And that's false for several reasons. First of all, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission made that statement just after 9-11. A couple days later, they had to withdraw it and concede that, with one exception, no reactor in the United States was designed to withstand the crash of a jumbo jet. Um, so the containment structure itself can readily be penetrated um, by the crash of a plane. But the second reason is you don't have to hit the containment structure. There are soft targets outside of the containment. Uh, control rooms, spent fuel pools, many other structures that are necessary for the operation, the safe operation of the reactor. And so you could have 10 Chernobyl's worth of radioactivity released from a spent fuel pool, and each Chernobyl's worth is a thousand times the long life radioactivity of the Hiroshima bomb. And the only way we prevent that is if the cooling is always operating. That means you have to have the off-site power coming into the reactor to run the pumps. It means that you cannot have a failure of the pipes which contain the cooling. What's simply going on is the NRC and the industry don't want to spend the money to protect the reactors. And at the same time, they're worried that if they explain to the public that these are dangerous and we therefore have to fix them, that it will undercut support for building new reactors.